Hello and welcome to the second segment of this conversation. And as I indicated earlier, we are talking about the Millennium Challenge account, Compact 1, Compact 2, uh, support for the Ghana's uh, power sector, and so on. And uh, we are particularly privileged to have with us Professor Sifa Dede, uh, who was chairman of the first compact and who took an active part in the discussions which led to the second compact and is currently leading the project in Ghana. Professor, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, we've already looked at what these compacts are and so on. How did you negotiate them? How did you begin to negotiate them? Thank you. The negotiations started with uh, an invitation to Ghana to prepare for a second compact, getting to the end of the first compact. Every country is assessed by the Millennium Challenge Corporation, and every year your eligibility is assessed. Ghana was found to be eligible for a second compact and therefore we were invited as a nation to prepare for a second compact whilst we were finishing the very first compact. How did we become eligible? What were the factors? There are various criteria that is used and economic freedom is one ruling justly and then taking care of your own people. There are several, about 20 indices that every year they go through for every country and the Ghana always for the last couple of years have placed at the top our performance has been very good and consistent the MPP would disagree uh, the facts are there and people can look at them and form their own opinions mm -hmm. the opinion of the MCC is that you are doing well and, and what are some of these facts? Uh, inflation is, is shooting through the roof. The currency is dropping in value. Yeah. Uh, gross domestic product is not growing as fast. Um, MPP is alleging that elections have been rigged and so on. What are the facts that you looked at? Yeah, I think that at uh, the time where we were eligible, compared to the current situation, the nation definitely has gone through some critical times. By the time we were eligible in 2010, 2011, when this thing was on top gear, uh, the performance of Ghana was acknowledged as being very good. Of course, just like we have in various countries globally, they're having challenges. And I think it is the nation's resolve to deal with those problems that are crucial for us as a nation. Identification of the power sector, for example, as the main theme for a second compact was timely because we all experienced the challenges in that sector and therefore the decision of tw at tw the decision in 2011 to look at power was a right one and i believe ghana will do well also in the second compact i understand it's very unusual to have countries have a second compact mm -hmm. how unusual is that i believe that our performance in the first compact and how for me to get a Ghanaian team of professionals together to deliver within budget and on time was something that we can all be proud of, that we were able to do it. I remember about three months before the end, there were various programs and discussions where we virtually were saying that it is not possible. But the evidence is there for everybody to see that Ghanaians can band together and work hard to solve local problems. Agriculture doesn't appear to be doing that well. Mm -hmm. Industry appears to be ex experiencing a decline. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the petroleum sector is having difficulties. How come that you, 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 you selected power? What is so special about power that you selected power over agriculture, over education, over all the other areas that appear to be in decline. The process of defining the theme for the compact started with a study which we undertook on the performance of the economy. And the question we posed 
was what was the binding constraint that is not making the economy grow as fast as we wanted to. In that study, we identified three binding constraints. The first one was power, unreliable power, insufficient power that constraints production at different levels. The second one was credit. And the third one was on property rights, land. Now, in concluding that study, recommendations were made that if we are looking for a theme that can have impact for a, nat a national economic growth, the power sector needs to be looked at carefully. And this was in 2011. And I'm definitely very happy that Ghana chose to look at power for its second compact, from what we are all experiencing. Now, specifically, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that you're going to do in the power sector? Specifics. There are six broad projects. The first two are linked to the two distribution companies we have in this country. That is the Electricity Company of Ghana and the Northern Electricity electricity distribution company to bring a turnaround and this turnaround involves several activities it includes foundational projects and investments improving their commercial operations also providing facilities as a modern utility in managing the power that is generated for distribution that is broadly what we're doing in those first two. And then we have a project on access, improving access to what we identified are the small and medium scale enterprises in the areas that we'll be looking at. There is the demand side management. When you produce power and you're not efficient in the use of the power, you may waste a lot of it, even in your home or in your business, in government buildings. So there's a section of the compact going to look at demand side management. How do we manage the power that is generated and that is available to us in our workplaces and in our homes? We will also be looking at regulation, the regulatory sector, strengthening it so that the regulator will be doing, will be more efficient to regulate the sector and provide good direction for efficiency in the system. Did we need a compact tool to, to know how to conserve power? Did we need a compact tool to know how to manage our, our, our distribution companies efficiently? Uh, the answer to that is that, yes, as a country, we can do some of these things ourselves. And in fact, we are already doing some. With the international partnership in development, you get donors of different categories providing support to countries to help them accelerate what they already has a mission to do. And that is what is happening in the compact. Many of the things are things that already either are in process or have been part of the policy reforms in the sector that is being accelerated so that we can catch up faster. You go to the ministries, mm -hmm. departments and agencies, yeah. midnight. There's only the watchman there and all the lights are on. You need a compact to, to put out the lights? Not necessarily. But you may need systems that allow the people who use the buildings and the facilities to be sensitive to this. That when I'm leaving an office, I need to switch off. Or you may have to have an automatic system that triggers on and off depending on whether the room is being used. And these technologies are available. We are not just using them in many places. Some places are using them, but in many places we are not. So the monies we are getting may enable us to, to put That's in place these exactly. uh, systems exactly. and so on. Now, is it true that we have to meet some conditionalities? Yes. What are these conditionalities? There are different levels. And the way I describe it is that you are doing very well in your work you have plans to do certain things and a friend comes along and says that I agree with the plans you have and I'm prepared to help you do this quickly. Before I give you the resources, just implement the plans that you already have. So what you will find is that a lot of these are what are referred to as affirmations of already existing policy, like the tariff issue. We already have a tariff issue in this country. Now, do 
do we implement it the way we've agreed we would do it? There's a gas master plan that is being developed. The Ministry of Energy and Petroleum has been working on this for some time. And I know that they've made great progress. That has been identified as one of the key things missing as we look at IPPs coming in for power generation. What is going to happen to the gas that we generate, the indigenous gas? How is the pricing going to be done? How is it going to be regulated? You need to have all these in place to get the private sector comfortable enough to say that I'm going to invest in this country. So the compact through some of the projects we're going to do is asking, do what you said you are doing, which will support you, and it will trigger the inflow of resources to do, to do other things. But is there, is there agreement on the tariff issue? There's no agreement on the tariff issue within the country. In many places, you are right. That is what will happen when there is a tariff. There will always be a reaction. Now, it's important for us as a people to know that we need to pay for what we legitimately consume. Yeah, but the important thing is that this automatic adjustment formula mm -hmm. is being contested by organized labor, by civil society organizations. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there have been massive demonstrations against it. So there's no agreement on it. Yes, I understand that there is no agreement. But without it, the outcome for what you are looking for as your ultimate increased investment in the sector will be affected. Yeah, but that's only one view. There are many views. That's only one view. Yeah, you could, we, could, we could look at different views and come to a consensus on this. Mm -hmm. And as a result of this, we have several studies that are going to be undertaken under the compact on the regulatory sector. Mm -hmm. Because some people have questioned the formula that is used. Some people have questioned whether some of the stakeholders who apply for tariff are actually efficient or we are not paying for their inefficiency. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we have factored this into the studies we are going to undertake to help the sector understand exactly what should be done. So it is possible that as a result of this intervention, we will review what we do in tariff setting. Are we now in the situation of placing the cart before the horse? In, in what respect? You need to have the studies. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to have an empirical basis to determine what the tariff regime should be. Yeah. We are already determining what the tariff regime should be, oh. and we are going to conduct studies. I am, I am sure that the PRC and other regulators have done some work in the past. And what they are doing is based on some work that they have the done. The PRC has not been able to satisfy organized labor. Organized labor is at war with PRC. So, so the automatic adjustment formula. So let's see how this comes out as we do these further studies to help the total system. And of course, when we do work under the MCC and MIDA, we'll do public consultation. A lot of it will be informed by also the wider stakeholders. And I believe that we will come to a better conclusion or a more acceptable conclusion. What about this, this rumor? Mm. Mm, rumor, yes, rumor. That this would entail privatization of the power distribution sector. We are not talking about privatization or the sale of the distribution sector. The power sector reform process that started many years ago have been very effective in bringing the private sector to participate in different segments, which hitherto was state controlled. The generation, for example, the, trans the transmission, and now we are looking at distribution. The performance of our distribution sector can be improved. And what has been agreed in principle is that bringing in the private sector investment and also technology can help the distribution sector. The principle has been agreed. The details of what form it will, we, we are still we are going to be working on. That's a part of the work. We but are is that true? Would yeah. the introduction of the private sector mm -hmm. necessarily bring about uh, efficiency? Uh, it is not necessarily true because there are other evidences. Exactly. But generally, when you have a big shareholder, which is government, in a big utility a distribution company like ECG or Netco, you will find that 
efficiency it's not because it is government but efficiency and the work ethics may be such that you are not getting as much as you could have gotten from that uh, entity and therefore an injection of some private ideas and investment will be useful already ECJ is doing that they are doing some of this in some projects that they have done recently where they have invited private sector to participate in different aspects of their operations and I think this should be enhanced for purposes of moving the area faster I've read the World Bank report sure. on, the, on the power sector mm -hmm. and the World Bank is quite clear mm -hmm. that uh, one of the, of the major problems mm -hmm. is uh, insufficient investment in the sector okay. and also bad political decisions that has nothing to do with bringing in the private sector, does it? Insufficient investment may require some private sector. Government itself can invest in the project. There, there are no huge resources yeah. that are leaking, leaking from the Ghanaian economy. If we could harness that, government could invest in the sector. I believe uh, that is right, that government could invest. But when you have partners who would like to help you in the process of what you already want to do, including the investment, I believe that it's prudent to take whatever resources that can add to what you can do yourself to have a faster delivery of uh, the products you are looking for. But isn't it true mm. that the model you're talking about also introduces the element mm. of, of, of profit motivation? The biggest shareholder in the distribution sector is the government. What can happen is that the distribution sector could become an area where you can get dividends back from their operations. That is, there will be no subsidies, there will be no inputs from government. They will actually be working efficiently. Are there subsidies today? There are no subsidies. In some areas, in the, in the north, the, the, the netco sector. The subsidy uh, is paid for by the consumer. The consumer pays for street lightning, pays for all kinds of things. You see the, 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 the electricity the bill. bill. There are no subsidies. Are there subsidies? I think in the netco operational areas, there may be some lifeline. Yeah, but those subsidies are paid for by the consumer. It's not from the central government. That is subject to debate. No, you take an electricity bill; it's all there. But there is no and, electricity and, bill. And how does it factor back? Rural electrification is paid yeah. for by the consumer. Street lightning is paid for by the consumer. Everything is paid for by the consumer. I think it's very important to know the total outcome of what you receive on your bill and how it impacts on the operations of the distribution sector. They may give you a bill. And they may show all these things, but are they sufficient for the operations of the distribution sector, the distribution companies? They're crying for resources partly because some of these are insufficient, or they don't even receive it the way they should to help them in the their problem. The consumers are also crying. They can't pay. Yeah. They're dying. Their salaries are inadequate. This automatic adjustment formula mm -hmm. is only going to lead to huge increases in utility bills. If the tariff setting process is clearer and fair and is transparent, I believe that we will be looking at a different system if we get it right. You think that the tariffs would come down or would stabilize? It is possible. It is possible. I hope so. It is possible. I think every Ghanaian hopes so. Yes, it is possible mm -hmm. that it will come down mm -hmm. or stabilize and not go up the way we think it, it will go up. Mm -hmm. It's because we need to do the background work very well and review what we've been doing as a nation. Mm -hmm. All the protests and all the other side of the discussion that has come have to be factored in mm -hmm. to ask the appropriate questions so that as a people and as consumers we'll be comfortable with exactly what we get as a result of the distribution. Now, Prof, what in your view would be the impact of this power sector reform and uh, investments in the power sector, for example, on agriculture? 
I can see that wherever you set up a good agricultural production system, you require a reliable power supply for purposes of handling your post-production systems. If you encourage farmers, small scale, medium scale, large scale, to grow, but after they have grown and harvested, they don't have systems to handle the produce properly, they are going to be making losses. And it's a disadvantage for further production. They definitely will reduce their production. And the next thing you know is that you're actually importing what you can grow. And therefore, the availability of reliable power in all parts of our country, especially the agricultural areas, is crucial to stimulate internal, I will call revolution, in agriculture. Because when I harvest my tomatoes in an area where there is power, and I can keep it under low temperature conditions. Or grind it. Or grind it. Or boil it. Without, without power, I'm constrained. I have produced it, but I'm constrained. And therefore, I'm going to reduce my production. And it's counterproductive. Well, welcome back to Hot Issues. And uh, we have Professor Sefa Dede in the chair. And he is the Ghanaian who is working on Compact 2. And Compact 2 is dedicated to improving the power sector. The United States of America has given us close to $500 million for this purpose. Now, Prof, we've been praised for the first Compact. You are chair of the board. Can you assure us that in the second Compact, our performance would be quite good? I can give you my full assurance that in this country we have the people who can deliver on the second compact. The important thing for us to appreciate is that we have systems in place for purposes of project management that allows us to monitor, that allows us to follow up on the activities that we have. And so for Ghana's second compact, a team just like the first one will be put up to help in the execution of the various projects. And because of the nature of the program, we definitely will require the expertise of those who are conversant in the power sector to help us run this. And this will be a totally Ghanaian-run organization as we did in the first compact. I'm very confident that we can do that. At the end of it, or what do we expect to see? An end to doom so, doom so? What really do we want to see at the end of it all? Definitely a reduction in outages. Definitely. That we don't experience this, that you can be guaranteed that in a matter of, let's say, one week or a month, if there is an episode, it's a very short one that you hardly even uh, feel it. Will notice. Or notice. Yeah. We also expect an, a very efficient distribution sector. I believe that when we, we solve that problem, it will go back to help us in dealing with the generation issue. You will make more people comfortable to say that this is an investment country. This is a place where I can do things with the people. We expect that there will be a change in the regulatory sector, there will be improvement and transparency in doing things in the sector to make all the key players comfortable, including consumers, comfortable with what we use as power in our homes, in our businesses, and also in our offices. And also, ECG and NETCO would not only, will not be the only power distributors. It is possible. We are not there yet. This is something that we are. It's currently being discussed, and we'll be doing very several consultations. The form in which it will take, you and I and other stakeholders will have contributions to make. There have been some complaints generally, not about Compact 1 and Compact 2, sure. but about uh, corruption in the award of contracts and so on. How are you dealing with that? Uh, our processes are a little different. Uh, we have the oversight of the board. Then we have also our MCC counterparts. We are audited so many times in the course of the year. The processes we have set up, our world of contracts is separate. It's something for management. And management effectively deal with that. But the board approves the final. 
the board doesn't deal directly with contractors. I believe that we have a system of uh, checks and balances in our operations that allow us to reduce to the barest minimum, in fact, non-existent, this type of thing, the corruption you described. Is of America getting out of this? I guess international goodwill and partnership. President Obama has this Power Africa initiative. And fortunately, Ghana is one of the first countries to receive such a grant from, from this initiative. I believe international partnership is something they're looking for to make sure. And goodwill. And goodwill. Foreign policy instrument. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Prof, thanks very much for coming you, to the Lizzie. studio. Thank you. And uh, Thank we're you. most grateful to you for Thank coming. You. And we are also very, very grateful uh, to Deidre mm -hmm. Fair James, mm -hmm. uh, who is the, is the American working on the project, mm -hmm. the country team mm -hmm. uh, leader. We're very grateful to you for coming on the show, and I do hope that uh, our viewers have gained a deeper understanding mm -hmm. of Compact 1 and Compact 2. Well, this is TV3. It always gives you the best. Best in entertainment, best in sports, best in news, best in everything. Keep your dial here until we meet again next week.